Welcome back. Now in this session we are going to write a PowerShell script to register application in Microsoft Azure. So to achieve this we are going to use Microsoft Graph module. So let's jump into the Visual Studio code to write the script. Let's write a function called connect to Azure AD and create app. This PowerShell script used for seamless interaction with Azure AD, creating a new application along the way. This function accepts two key parameters, the application name and the permission ID. Step 1. Connecting to Azure AD with required scopes. First, we lay the foundation by connecting to Azure Active Directory. Here, it is important to specify the scopes like application read all, application read write all, and user read all these three scope is required because we are performing read, write of Azure application registration. Next we have step two, creating an application. Now that we have access, our next move is to provide a new application with a given name. In this step, we initiate the creation of a new application in Azure AD. The chosen display name for this application is specified by the app name parameter. Think of it as giving our application a distinct name. Once the application is created, we extract and store its unique identifier, known as the object ID. Now, we verify our creation by fetching detailed information about the application. The display name, object ID, and application ID, also known as client ID, are then presented. It's like checking the details of our newly created application. Step 3. Generating a client secret. In this step, we're dynamically generating a client secret for our application. We define a hash table, password cred, with properties such as display name set to the application's name, add name. The end date time is configured to be 12 months into the future. We then create the client secret using addmg application password. The command let utilizes the application's object ID, app object ID, and the specified credentials, password cred, to generate a secure secret. Following the secret's creation, we immediately display its details. Using format list, we present the information in a clear list format. Next let's move to step 4, grant permissions to the app. Now, we move on to granting specific permissions to our application. We define a hash table, permission perms, specifying the required resource access. In this case, we're targeting the Microsoft Graph API, resource app ID is set to its unique identifier. Within this, we define a resource access array, specifying the permission by its ID, permission ID, and type, set to role. The update mg application commandlet is then employed to apply these permissions to our application. It uses the application's object ID, app object ID, and the defined permission prompts for this purpose. With permissions granted, we extract essential details about our application. Client ID is set to the application ID, also known as the client ID. Tenant ID is obtained by fetching the ID of the organization using getMGOrganization.id. Client secret is retrieved from the previously generated client secret. 
Finally, we package these details into a hash table and return it. This information, including the client ID, tenant ID, and client secret, is crucial for further interactions and integrations involving our newly created Azure AD application. Now let's write code to use the function. First we will specify the permission ID. For time being we will keep this text. And while we do execution we will replace with actual permission ID that we will grab from Microsoft documentation that I will show you how to do that. Next we will call the function by passing the value for the parameters. The first parameter we have is app name and second one is permission ID. And at last we are just printing the returned value of newly created app within Azure AD. Now let's test it. But prior to that we need to grab the permission ID from Microsoft documentation. For that we need to visit the documentation of permission reference from Microsoft. And this is the URL of permission reference site. So let's do that. We are into the permission reference site. So let's grab permission ID for risky user read write because this is the permission I want to scope in my application. Copy the ID of application permission and paste it somewhere as we are going to use this ID when we run our script. Now let's jump into the Visual Studio code and paste it into the permission ID variable. Over here let's paste the copied permission ID. Now next we will select the function which we have written and right click and select run selection. This will load the function into the memory and when we run the example usage code then line 58 will recognize the function. Now we have loaded the function into the memory let's select line 57 to line number 61 and right click and select run selection. This will take it to web browser where we need to provide our credential and click on consent checkbox and click on accept button to provide the consent for application related scopes. Once you do that, it will execute the script and register the application into the Azure AD. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code and verify the log into the terminal. And you see here we got three requested information for newly created app. This means that we have successfully created a new app. So let's confirm this by visiting Azure portal and validate the application registration. So we are into Azure portal and over here you need to click on Microsoft Intra ID. So click on Microsoft Intra ID and then we need to select app registrations. Now we need to select view all applications in the directory and over here you will notice that our new application is sitting with the name which we have provided. So for this case, we have provided M365 administration using PowerShell app. If you check the API permission, you will find that it has the same scope which we have consented. And we have consented the same identity risky user read write. We done with the validation, but prior to closing the session, we have to perform last step. Let's rename this file from PS1 to PSM1. PSM1 extension is for PowerShell module. Why PowerShell module to know that you have to check my PowerShell course. But for a time being just understand that we will be using this code in our future labs. In that scenario we'll add this code as module for app registration. We don't need to rewrite the code. This PSM1 file which is a PowerShell module file help us to achieve reusability. So friends, this is what I wanted to demonstrate you in this session. We are going to use this program in our upcoming sessions that is the reason I have kept this script as our first exercise in this course. So on this note, I am stopping over here see you in the next session.